Hello guitar enthusiasts of every stripe and description, it's Steve, the OG Guitar Nut, coming to you on February 7th, 2023. Hope you've had a good couple of weeks since I last spoke with you. Uh, mine's been interesting, I'll say no more. I, I should mention, uh, since it's pertinent to uh, today's episode, which is in fact a review episode, this is my birthday week. And uh, that's important because my wife decided she wanted to get me a fun and interesting birthday present. And you know, the best birthday gifts, they say, are the ones that uh, you would never buy for yourself. And in this particular case, it's true. It's not to say that I don't like what she bought me. In fact, I like it a great deal. But it's not something I would have necessarily thought of for myself. Which makes it that much more interesting, really, right? So what it is, uh, my wife had gone on to uh, Amazon, where she does a lot of shopping. We often have packages all over our porch. Keep an eye out for porch pirates. She was looking through my saved list of things. And I had a bunch of books on there, of course, music related. And she was thinking of buying me a book or two. And then uh, she was looking at my recently viewed items, which I wasn't aware you could do, but you can. And she happened across some guitars that I'd been browsing and saw one in particular that uh, I hadn't even noticed myself, really. But she said, wow, I bet Steve would like that. And of course, the reason she thought that I would like that was because my favorite color is green. In the case of guitars, specifically green burst. And uh, she saw this. This is a Senstar. As far as I know, it's the only model Senstar makes at this point from Amazon. My wife noticed it initially because of its color and its interesting shape, and then noticed that it's headless. Apparently, according to her, she thought, well, Steve doesn't have a headless guitar, so that'll be interesting. Well, she's more or less right. I actually do have a headless, a Steinberger, what is the model GL2, the little, you know, paddle-shaped one that I bought specifically to use as a travel guitar, although honestly it doesn't see much use, uh, partially because I don't travel all that often, but uh, just in general. Uh, it's a little awkward to play, uh, which I'll, spoiler alert, unlike this, this isn't awkward at all. Anyway, so as I mentioned, Sunstar, and I uh, like the elephant in the room, of course, it is headless. It's a very distinctive shape, as well as a distinctive color, and uh, we will talk about all that. So the elephant in the room, uh, the shape, since it's shaped somewhat like an elephant, I have no idea why I said that. So you might be wondering, why on earth would you have to have a guitar of this shape? Well, it turns out that with this shape, you can easily rest it on your leg or your other leg in a standard guitar position, which works out great. You can also rest this surface on your leg and have a classical position which is kind of cool. Some people like to play that way. It, uh, it's very ergonomic, as they say. And uh, yeah, it definitely gives it an interesting look, right? So let's go over what this thing's made of. I can't tell you what the, uh, the body wood is. I can tell you that it's a very flamed maple look and uh, on the top here. And if you switch over to the back, it looks to be one piece of wood. Oh. Two pieces of wood, one kind. Um, you can see here the center seam. You can see that the back, as well as the front, has a lot of figuring, not necessarily flames like this. So, for all I know, this could be a paper thin veneer. It could be actual paper. It's hard to say, uh, being Amazon, you know, anything's possible. But it looks really good, feels really good. It's a satin finish, which feels nice. It's an open poured satin, so you can actually feel the wood grain which I like. I like it a lot. It uh, really appeals to me. So onward to the neck. The neck is a five-piece of, five, yes, five-piece affair, which appears to be maple, walnut, maple, walnut, maple. Of course, there could be different kinds of wood, but I'm pretty confident that it is maple here. It's a uh, semi-satin finish, so it, it's not going to gum up on you like a gloss finish would. It's got the distinctive 
volute here. Fingerboard appears to be actual rosewood, which, you know, 20 years ago wouldn't be a big deal. But rosewood is getting difficult to find. People are using substitutes now. So if this is actual rosewood, which it appears to be, that's a, that's a pretty cool spec. Especially for, you know, a budget price guitar coming from Amazon. As you can see here, it has these interesting offset fingerboard inlays, which split up after the 12th fret, starting 15th here. It's kind of a neat look. should also mention these frets. These are actual stainless steel frets, something else which you don't generally see at this price point, and uh, couldn't be smoother. You know, I've picked up guitars, the you know two thousand dollar Les Paul I almost bought myself for my last birthday. I believe it was a traditional Pro Four model, nothing but sharp fret ends. This is a hundred percent better. You know, all the difference. Also, these are what they call ball end frets which is to say before the frets are installed, they're put in a vise of some sort, and the ends are actually rounded off, well, like, you know, the tip of your thumb. They're rounded. So then when they insert them into the fingerboard, it's practically impossible for there to be a sharp edge. Uh, even if the frets, you know, the fretboard were to shrink a little, and the frets were to stick out proud of the board, they still wouldn't be sharp. They would protrude, but uh, the way they're inlaid on here, there's just enough of a gap at the end of the fingerboard sides that uh, even if it shrinks a little bit, I don't think it's ever going to be an issue. So big, big kudos to Senstar on this fret job and uh, the neck in general, which, by the way, is a kind of a comfortable C shape that's, you know, not too distinctively unusual. It's a standard, feels like a Fender Stratocaster, more or less. Also, I'd point out that unlike most Fender Stratocasters, this has a spoke wheel truss rod adjustment. You can jam virtually any little screwdriver, piece of metal, um, well, not a pen because it'll break, but virtually any small thing into here and adjust this. No popping a neck off like old vendors. No fighting with a Allen wrench at the headstock end, trying to get around the strings and fit into the cavity. Uh, this is a way, way better design for the truss rod. So we've mentioned the uh, the neck, we've mentioned the body, um, which as I said, you know, it ostensibly, well, I don't know. The whole thing could be maple. It really could. Um, I wouldn't expect it at this price point, but hey, anything's possible, right? I'd also point out that the heel joint here is sculpted. It's rounded over and it actually slants inward. It's quite a bit more comfortable than your usual blocky inlay. And the uh, neck is attached with four screws, no neck plate. Um, very solid neck join. I don't see any gaps whatsoever. Um, in fact, I, I dare say this is the kind of neck you could take the bolts out and the neck could probably still stay attached. You know, it's uh, very well done. So um, other distinctive things I could show you right here. The input jack is located down here in a recessed cavity which is really cool because as you can see it points right back this way you know it allows you to go right underneath your strap without any effort it's completely out of your way pretty ingenious I, it's the sort of thing I think uh, more designers should use especially with these you know odd shaped instruments so how's this thing work well it has this headpiece and unlike many other headless guitars, including the expensive Strandbirds, which are, you know, in the $3,000 range, you actually put the ball ends in this side, and the strings come down and attach at the bridge. A much more elegant and clean solution than what you have with a lot of other headless guitars, where the strings wind up sticking out the top. Or in the case of the Steinbergers, they're made for specialized double ball end strings that are practically impossible to find, and when you do find them, they're expensive. Now, granted, they make replacement headpieces that'll allow you to use regular strings, but again, that's one more thing you're buying. It's another expense. It's just, you know, this is already done right for you. Um, so the strings go through the headpiece, cross over this actual bone nut, which is a nice touch, and then hit this zero fret. Now, the zero fret offers a couple of advantages over guitars without them. One, it allows you to get a good very low action. 
because there's no big break angle over the nut to deal with. The other is it allows the open strings to have the same tonality as the fretted strings because there are no not fretted strings technically. They're all hitting a fret of some sort. So that's a neat feature. Onward to the bridge. Obviously you tune here. Strings hook into these hooks. And there are a, a plethora of little screws and things here that all do something different. Uh, it's through trial and error that I figured it out because this came with no sort of instructions. Nor could I find any information online, unfortunately. Sunstar doesn't apparently have any sort of a, a website, per se. But I figured it out. Uh, the strings come down, go over these little brass fingers, which are attached to little brass wheels. I know it's hard to see here. Take my word for it. And those fingers act as the bridge saddles. Strings actually attach down here at the bottom of this wheel mechanism and are tightened with these thumb wheels. Now, the thumb wheels are not terribly easy to move. I'll be honest with you. They require some torquing and it's a bit of a pain. Makes it difficult to get into tune easily. Fortunately, once you're in tune, it stays there. It's one of the uh, great advantages of this kind of a design is these tend to stay very stable, okay? So, one thing I wanted to do when I got this was set the intonation. So I'm looking at this situation and I see that each bridge saddle set has a pair of small grub screws. So I thought, well, they're not facing down like on, you know, a standard Stratocaster or something. But they probably still work the same way. They're in an angle. Crank these guys and the pitch should increase. The saddle should move back. So I started to do that with the low E string. And sure enough, the string did sharpen. And the saddle did appear to be moving back. And I was getting close to getting it intonated. And I suddenly realized that my low E string was twice as high off the fingerboard as all the other strings. Well, it turns out that what this grub screw actually does is rotates the wheel that the bridge saddle fingers are attached to. So when you increase the tension on the grub screw, what actually happens is the wheel turns. The finger comes up. And it is moving farther away from the neck, so it is sharpening the note you know, in terms of intonation. But it's also raising the finger up, and therefore the action. So I got that back down to where it was. And after a little trial and error, it finally turned out that the way you adjust the intonation is you simply loosen the string a bit, and you move the entire saddle mechanism with your finger. Um, it's just that simple. I was making things more complicated than they had to be. So it is completely intonable, completely height adjustable. I just wasn't getting it. And uh, likewise, changing strings is as simple as running one down into the hole and this other roller and turning this thumb screw till it twists around and around and uh, you have tension. Now, obviously, these are hard to turn as I mentioned. And they're going to require a lot of turns to put in new strings. So what in the world are you going to do? Well, they actually thought of that. If you look here on the side of the bridge, there's actually a tiny removable crank. You can see that. And what this crank does is Put down this pick. The end is, where are we? The end is hex. And it actually fits in to these wheels and allows you to twist them. Now granted, it's a little finicky. It's not the sort of thing you're going to want to use to tune the guitar itself. I mean, could you theoretically? Sure. 
but for restringing purposes, it's great. Now, if you lost this, you wouldn't be out of luck. You could still do it by hand. But it is a really cool little accessory. And uh, as it, it turns out, it's, it's magnetic. It attaches to the bridge. And uh, out of sight, out of mind, if I can figure out how in the world it goes back on. Yeah, there we go. And it just basically disappears. You don't really even notice it, that it's there. Other than this little lip sticking out. So that's kind of cool. So, we've uh, talked about all that. Now onward to the other components. Standard strap buttons. They're a little larger than normal, which is nice. Um, you might want to swap them out for locking strap buttons. Uh, I'm personally using a locking strap, which is kind of an interesting design from Planet Waves. In order to get it off, you pull up on a tab and it just automatically locks. I kind of like these. So, it's, you know, defeats the need for strap locks per se. We have a standard three-way switch, which feels healthy enough. A volume and a tone. There are no coil splits or uh, anything of that nature. These are full-time humbuckers. Now these humbuckers, they're nameless, so clearly generic. Single row of adjustable pull pieces and a row of non-adjustable slugs. They're direct body mounted, no pickup rings as you can see. And uh, I would describe the sound of these as a medium output, uh, a nice compromise. They're not too hot, not too heavy metal. They're not too weak. You know, some inexpensive guitars are known for having really weak pickups. This isn't one of them. So uh, these are nice. And uh, that's pretty much it for the components. There's not a whole lot else going on here. It's, it's, it's simplicity. So we want to hear what this bad boy sounds like, right? So to that end, I want to show you what I'm working with here. Uh, well, come with me. la dee, -dee. For my clean sounds, I'm using one of my beloved Ibanez TSA-15H heads, which at the moment is running into this Jet City 333 amplification 112 speaker cabinet. Hopefully you can see that. That's my clean side. For the dirty side, yes, I'm splitting into two different amps here. Uh, we're using this Vox. MV50 High Gain. These things are on sale for $99 right now at Vox. Uh, it's kind of an unbeatable value if you're looking for a small amp. And that is 50 actual watts with their new tube technology. Um, pretty impressive little amp. And that's running into an old Marshall 112 cabinet. So, thank you for traveling with me. Get you back over here. Nothing but pro quality filming here. This is cinematography at its finest. Now, I'm running into an old DoD AB box to split between the two amplifiers uh, since the MV50 really only does high gain. It doesn't have any decent cleans. Even with the gain all the way down, it has zero, nearly zero clean to speak of. Unlike the Ibanez TSA-15H head, which is only cleans. Now, it does have a built-in tube screamer, but that's not the sound that I'm looking for. So I'm just using it as basically a 15-watt, you know, clean tube platform. So, we'll start off, turn up the volume and the tone, and here's our clean sound. We'll start with the neck pickup. Ah, that's a dirty sound. <laughs> we'll start with the neck pickup. I guess we'll get a little volume on it. There we are. Sorry about that. You like my uh, sexy pajama pants? Again, nothing but the highest quality from my show. Uh, neck pickup. pick up we 
a bit shrill, but that's also part of the fact that I'm running into this 112 cabinet with a fairly new speaker. It's not really all that broken in yet. Uh, I traded something for that cabinet. Damned if I can remember what it is. But this cabinet was literally never used. So uh, the most I could say about this speaker is that it was dusty from sitting in someone's basement. But it's, it's essentially unused. So it's a little brighter than it probably will be after some time. <laughs> You go to the middle position. Mm -hmm. Kind of a nice, well, a blend sound as you'd expect. Mm -hmm. Not a bad sound at all. And uh, I'll point out something. This is a pet peeve of mine. You'll notice. This is dry as a bone. The only reverberation you might hear is coming from bouncing off my walls. As someone that loves watching YouTube videos of reviews, which I am and do, it absolutely drives me up a wall when someone's demonstrating a guitar or an amp and they say, this is my clean tone with just a bit of reverb and delay and phase. And you know what? We want to hear the damn instrument or and the damn amp. Leave the crap off. I'm speaking to all of you other YouTubers out there. Stop it. I understand you probably prefer having a bit of reverb on your amp, maybe a bit of delay, but don't use it for reviews unless you're reviewing the delay or the reverb itself. Thank you. Rant over. So anyway, yes. <laughs> So there are cleaner tones. Now we'll swap over to the Vox. <laughs> These pickups definitely do enjoy being driven. No question about it. Um, as I said, they work fine for cleans, but actually they surprisingly nice, you know, distorted channels. Bridge pickup, of course. I move over to the neck pickup and get some nice creamy. Action is actually a little bit higher up here on the fretboard at the moment than I would like. Uh, you know, as these things acclimatize, it's only been out of the box for a day. Um, you know, I'm going to have to do a little more adjustment, but it feels pretty good overall. So it's almost got a bit of a singing to it like you'd like from a good neck pickup. And in the middle position, you know. Got a nice neck position. Oh, I should say middle position. Um, I actually really like the middle position a lot. Um, for uh, classic rock, pop, top 40, um, the kind of alternative stuff that my band does, you know, I think this could be a pretty, pretty darn usable uh, tone, actually, this middle position. Uh, yeah, kind of digging it. Yeah, uh, boy. I'm not good at playing in classical position, but I don't want the guitar to be out of frame. Of course, if I stand up to the guitars in frame, then my face is out. Who wants that, right? So, uh, yeah, it's got some good tones. Um, yeah, I've got no complaints about the tones at all. I'll be taking this to my band, Raygun, uh, our rehearsal tonight. We have a gig coming this Saturday. Um, which is the 11th. We're at the five spot in East Nashville. 
It's our bass player Kevin Hornbeck's birthday, so it'll be a bit of a celebration. But I intend to take this guitar to that gig, and I think this will be my guitar for the night. You know, I'll have something else around as a spare in case I break a string or something, although that's unlikely. I think I've broken four strings in the last 20 years playing. But uh, yeah, I think this will be my, my instrument for the night. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Should be a really good good gig. We've got some interesting uh, guests coming. Um, not the least notable of which is Kevin Max from the famous uh, Christian rock slash rap group DC Talk, who's coming to uh, sing a Roxy music song with us, which will be kind of interesting. We often have guests come in, and uh, some more notable than others. More, nor, nor mortal? more notable than others. Uh, he's one of the more notable. Uh, a couple of years back before COVID, we had Cheetah Chrome from the Dead Boys come on stage and perform Sonic Reducer with us. It's just something we do. It's a lot of fun. And being in Nashville, there are plenty of people, notable people, that either live here or come through here. They come sit in with us. It's fun. What are you going to say? So anyway, this is the guitar. This is Sunstar. Now, you're probably wondering, what's something like this thing cost, just in case you want one for yourself? Well, it's listed right now on Amazon, and I'll, I'll put a link down below, at $279. And my wife told me, because she was proud of herself, and should be, uh, that she saved $20 additional because there was a coupon attached. Uh, it may or may not still be there. Uh, $259 is an even better buy. But it, even at $279, my, this is my summary here. This is a great guitar. Uh, is it perfect? No. Is anything perfect? No. Um, is it, let me do the math here, 4, um, 12. Is it uh, one twelfth the quality of a... Uh, what are they called? Sandberg? Uh, Steinberg? Uh, the expensive ones. No, not at all. Um, are those better? Sure, sure, certainly they are. Um, they've, you know, they're all quirky in their own ways. But is this, you know, one tenth the value? Absolutely not. Um, I would say this guitar plays easily like something that would cost double its normal price if you bought it in a store. If I had to say, uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see this as a $4.99 guitar at a guitar center, for instance. And even at that price, I think it'd be a, a solid buy. I'd recommend it. I do recommend it. So there you go. Also, I would mention, and I'll include a picture, I don't know, maybe here, to show you the other finishes. It also comes in sort of a gray-black, which, you know, see-through. Uh, a red, I believe there's sort of an orange burst. Uh, a really nice blue. But naturally, I went with the green burst. Well, my wife went with the green burst for me because she knows what I'm into. And she couldn't be more right, of course. So anyway, there you go. My review of the Sendstar headless guitar. No model number that I'm aware of because at the moment it's the only model they offer. So anyhow, uh, if you like this, let me know below. If you didn't like this, let me know below. If you buy one of these, let me know below. If you already have one, let me know. Um, Makes a great gift, and we're past the holidays, but there's birthdays coming up for everyone. As far as I know, people have them virtually every year, right? See what I did there? So anyway, until next time, which I'm hoping will just be a few days from now when I'm going to have a regular episode, I've been Steve, you've been you. As I always like to say, stay cool, stay frosty, be good to yourself and others, chime on, and just play the damn guitar. I think that's going to be my my new mantra, my my catchphrase for this channel. Play the damn guitar. Until I talk to you next, Steve out. Play the damn guitar.